Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Power Tips coming right at you. Not to be corny, but that's pretty corny. But we are excited to be here. The Wave 1 of 2025 release has officially come out, and we are very excited to be looking at all the features over the next few weeks, several weeks, many weeks, because there's just so much to unpack. So we're going to start with D365 sales and start to throw at you some of the new things that you can be excited are coming down the pipe. So over to you, Heidi. And excited we are. So I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but when I first got to the dynamic sales release notes, I was like, where's the rest of them? And specifically, sales copilot was missing, which has traditionally been a part of the sales release notes. So I just wanted to point this out in case any of you were looking for copilot updates. Copilot has its new own section of the release notes. So all copilot is kind of together in that area. So that's a new thing that we will be diving in on on a future episode. So with no further ado, here's some sales updates. This one I thought was really cool because two episodes ago, we were talking about different agents in Microsoft 365. And this is the first time I'm seeing one in the first party app, specifically sales. So this is the sales qualification agent. And the aim of this is to automate and make life easier for our sales reps by delivering the highest probability leads that will close and turn into opportunities. So how does this work? There's a number of things going on here. There's actually three agents working within this one. Your first agent is the research agent. This one's really interesting because according to the release notes, it is culling together all of the information in your CRM system as well as publicly facing sources. It's combining <laughs> all of that information together, and then it goes into the prioritization agent. And that is going to look at all of your lead account, contact opportunity information. It's going to say which ones have a higher probability because of this data point and that data point and the public information. And then finally, it goes into the engagement agent, which is going to craft a highly personalized email that you'll be able to send, which is going to use all of the information from that research agent and put it into a nice thing that you can just click and it will, <laughs> it promises to increase conversions on that email that you send. And it's pretty neat. So there's one screenshot in the release notes. I have it up on this slide. And I like that it's just putting it in your face, right? It's a new UI. It's going to combine the lead and the opportunity. So as the sales rep, it's all in one space. I don't have to click around and do different things. It kind of follows me. And it's like, hey, look, Beth is a really good prospect for you. Here's an email that we think you should send. Click this button. You can see the draft and then you can send it. So I know I've said a lot. I'm a little excited about this one, if you can't tell. <laughs> public previews in March. I have lots of questions like, where is this public information coming from? Do I have control? And can I put guardrails up on this public information and specifically exclude things or include things that I want? Um, but good news is we'll get to play around with this one soon. And GA is slotted for April. So this one will be on the earlier side wow. of the release notes, which That's is cool. Turnaround. What do you guys think about this one? Yeah, that's a rapid turnaround, right? March, start to play with it in March and you get it in April, which is impressive. I mean, this sounds amazing if it's going to do all the things that it says, but I totally agree with your guardrails comment. Like if it's pulling anything that it can find in, there can be all kinds of garbage information out there. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have to be able yep. to filter some of that out. And I think this also shows kind of the co-pilot release notes you're talking about how closely that will go with or, or overlap the other release notes because these are still part of like co-pilot actions, but they're not within a co-pilot, they're just within the product. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. how we kind of manage keeping track of all that stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on this. Opt in to public preview so you yeah. too can play around with the sales qualification agent. Ne my item is next. And so I'm a bit confused by this one. So we're, we have a new feature to integrate with Exchange using server-side synchronization. Um, they said this is related to um, Exchange updates to support things like relationship analytics and who knows whom, um, and that there's uh, kind of improvements from the old server-side sync, like more granular control, 
improved reliability and improved flexibility. Um, but for those of us who've been doing CRM for a long time, we are familiar with server side sync and the app for Outlook and all of those things. So I'm curious, there wasn't a whole lot of information here. So I'm kind of curious for what this actually looks like. Is this more functionality with my um, co-pilot within um, Outlook instead of using the app for Outlook or how is this going to work? But a lot of cool things here um, that we can use Exchange for. Excited to see some of that functionality hopefully get merged back in together. I know we've heard Heidi talk about all the different things that you can use in Outlook at the same time. Um, and so hopefully that makes that a bit easier. <laughs> That would be nice. I mean, in the in the realm of CRM, I mean, we've all been doing this for a lot of years. I don't think I've ever seen an improvement in server side sync since like yeah. CRM twenty thirteen, right? And I had to, I had to read it. I'm glad you opened with that, Kylie, because I read it twice. Because I'm like, what am I missing? This is not this is not a new thing. I don't. And yeah. so I I resolved to the fact that it's it's the greater flexibility improved. It's they're just making some tweaks and enhancements. Right. Which not to underscore the work that probably has to go in to do that, but it didn't. It reads as a brand new exciting feature, but it really yeah. isn't. So. And maybe it's exciting for some people who didn't use the app for Outlook before. That's possible. Um, so maybe we're re-promoting some of that stuff. But yeah, I'm really curious what the more granular control is because in the past we had um, the filters. I forget what they're called that you can use to kind of determine what syncs and it was always kind of a bit of a hassle and struggle to figure out. So if there's improvements there, that'll be really exciting. I like your idea that maybe this will give us like one co-pilot yes. experience in Outlook. We're, so we're manifesting it. Right on that. <laughs> Uh, and my other item here was that you can now provide your own tone of voice across all email communication. So this relates to emails, you know, that we're generating with Copilot, right? And the article talks about how we have, uh, you know, sellers have a certain way of working and they have a certain way that they talk to their, uh, their prospects and they um, want to be able to make use of that within within um, Copilot, right? So they'll be able to create a custom tone, use that in emails, define the tone selection and consistency across that those communications. So I think that's gonna be more flexibility, sounds like at a user level for um, my Copilot generated things. So I think there's a lot of exciting things coming there. This one made me chuckle because the AI naysayers, for the record, I say that supportively. I, I think it's great that there are people out there that are pushing back on this and saying, I don't actually think these advancements are as earth shattering as we seem to think they are. And I think that's a great train of thought. I think we should always challenge things. But I think their mainstay response on this one is, yeah, I'll do that by writing my own emails. I don't need some AI tool <laughs> to write my emails. My tone comes through when I write it. And so that that to me was an interesting um, I don't even know, like weird circle of of this whole situation because I could just write them all and it would be my tone. I don't have to go and teach it how to write in my tone. But but then I think if you layer in the time savings that some of this can can give people, um, I think there's a ton of benefit here. So. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it really looks like and how it really mm -hmm. works. With a lot of these things too. I think you'll see some early adopters, people that are like all in, like, yeah, 100%. this is going to change my life. And then others will never, ever use this. And we're talking about this in the context of dynamics for sales. And we all know how much salespeople love embracing new technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So this is the last one that we have. Um, you can tell that I ran out of time this week and quickly threw this one together this morning because it's like, I find this ugly, but so sorry for that for viewers. Shield your eyes. But but I did find this one pretty cool. So service interactions leading to leads. And so it gave some examples in the note. It, essentially, it's going to comb through cases and look for trends and things that likely could lead to an opportunity. And so I've given some examples. Two of them were in the support notes or in the release notes. Support following somebody hitting a service limit, maybe they need an upgrade, right? Or if somebody's asking about premium features on an ongoing basis, Maybe you can upsell them with that. Maybe maybe you need to give them more time than just answering the questions. Um, and one that we just threw in there asks about other product offerings. Maybe we have opportunities to cross sell. And so I think this is huge because this notion of cross sell upsell, and I hear people describe it as the the Amazon approach all the time. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that out loud, but that's what I hear people say, right? We want a scenario where because they bought these things, 
we see the people also considered or people also bought or people also looked at kind of experienced directly in the app. And I think this starts to get in that from a service perspective. I mean, it's literally what it's trying to do. So I think there's a, a ton of potential here. It'll just be interesting to see how does it decide what's actually a valid opportunity because that I find is defined a little bit differently based on any organization you talk to. What, what would actually be a potential opportunity seems to have a, a differing uh, description. So interesting to see this one's public preview in April. There is no GA date uh, or even early access date at this point. So um, be interesting to see this one come out, start to play around a little bit with it in the in the trial environments and see how does it actually consume the information from the cases into an opportunity. Any thoughts? Yeah, I like this one a lot because your best source of future leads or future business is your current customer base. And mm -hmm. if you're in a siloed organization, I'm sure none of you are, but if your customer <laughs> service team is over here and your sales team is over here and they're not talking very well, this is an awesome way for the system to identify that, you know, maybe this is something that you should check out. This is neat. And I find it interesting. We have no GA date. That makes me think that our feedback will help develop this and make it like a good thing or or a not awesome thing. So I highly encourage everyone to play around with this and make sure you give it a thumbs up and a thumbs down when it does things that you like and you don't like. And make sure you have data that is good data on your cases, right? So cases and opportunities, right? So making sure that you're, the, the AI can only be as good as the data that it's working off of. So I'm sure that there are some limits in here around how many cases and opportunities you need before you can even enable us, this. And then you also um, need to make sure that that's good data and you don't have, you know, salespeople closing everything as one, even if it's not one or something like that, or leaving stuff open, right? Okay. Good stuff. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today for Power Tips, learning about the new release wave items for sales. Uh, we encourage you to check out the release wave notes. Let us know down in the comments what you liked about the sales feature or other products that you'd like to hear us talk about next. And we'll share our favorite features and get some feedback from you. Thanks. <laughs>